Hello and welcome to the first episode of August Instinctive Flying Techniques. These techniques are an effort to get the majority of the pilots that fly radio control helicopters into flying 3D aerobatics and allowing them to free themselves from the shackles of not being able to fly the way they always wanted. So this technique uh, has been developed for several years and has been used uh, with uh, a lot of success. So far it's a hundred percent success in teaching people how to do, uh, how to train their brains to become instinctive flyers and so they don't have to be thinking while they're flying. The first part of this uh, series is going to be obviously setting up your radio control helicopter correctly and to do that we are going to go through the setup starting with this uh, simulator called the next simulator. This is one of the probably four simulators I'm going to use because somebody mentioned today that we needed to get also real flight, so let's do that too. So we're going to have next accuracy, heli X, and real flight. Uh, we're going to have those uh, four as the um, four first episodes of the series, and then after that, we're going to go straight into some crazy 3D. That episode will be released at the. Saturday of the uh, what's the name of that? Spring Fling Fall Fly of 2021. That will be the beginning. It will include um, some pretty uh, amazing uh, demo uh, and a few other things. It's, it's a lot of surprises for this. So if you haven't learned about it and you want to learn about this new technology or it's not that new it's, it's, it, I have used this for a long time several decades as a matter of fact and uh, and you want to see that in a live in live uh, go and get registered on Facebook and join the group RC heli hangout and that's R lowercase C C RC heli hangout and that would be the group that has about 5,000 members at this point. So that will be the one that you want to join. So anyway, let's start with this with this um, lesson here. Uh, so first, uh, you have your transmitter, and the first thing that you need to have in your transmitter. Let's bring this uh, here, out. and we're gonna go to settings, all right? And we're gonna go to input device because that's what the transmitter is an input device, right? Now we have this thing here, as you can see, actually, let me put it a little bit on the left here. Okay, and this on the right, okay. So what you have here right now is a monitor that shows you what is moving in your radio. So uh, if you look at your radio monitor, the one that has uh, all these bars that go up and down, you should make sure that every single thing that you plan on programming actually moved some bar in there so that this uh, program and any other program can recognize uh, the movement of that. For instance, this is a collective. As you can see, let me move it away a little so you can see the collective stick. It happens here and here. The uh, rudder, or what I call it, the far near stick here. Then you have the aileron, 
elevator. In addition to that, I have program rescue, because if you're not using rescue, you are either a billionaire or you don't have some common sense. So that's uh, what it is. Anyway, so we're going to go into flight mode. Okay. Uh, I forgot how to flight mode here. Oh, that's interesting. I think it's doing it outside this channel. But anyway, we'll test it anyway. So, and uh, we have here, this one here, I use it as a reset. I don't like to wait for the helicopter to reset. I do it here quickly because I don't have time to be waiting for the thing to come back. And then we have here, oh, that's what it was. So we have here the, um, okay, that's what happened. I had the, the, the um, throttle hole on so it would not allow me to switch the flight mode. So here's flight mode, uh, one, two, three, and throttle hole, okay? So in other words, this is something that you need to have programmed in the radio. So in other words, if so, if if it's not moving here somehow, or on these switches or some other place like that, the um, computer will not be able to know that you're moving something in your in your transmitter. So this is the first step. You need to make sure that something moves. This flight mode. This one is not used, for instance. Neither this, but this one is because I'm using this for reset. This one I'm using for throttle hold. Uh, elevator, aileron, collective, and I'm going to say that again, rotor, but I don't call it rotor stick, I call it f near and far stick, and you will notice, you will learn that in, uh, in the in the episodes regarding um, rotor, understanding the rotor. Alright, so first thing that, uh, that we said, okay, we have this here. No, se second thing that we want to do is now that we have input device, we have model, functions, gimbal, and result. So model functions, stick mode number two is the stick mode depending on whether you are flying to mode two, which is a flight, the, the, the mode that is used by most Americans and many in the, in the rest of the world, but a lot of Europe and, and Asia, they use mode one. So here's where you choose that. Mode means what uh, side of your of your um, uh, gimbals are assigned to uh, throttle and rudder and things like that. So it changes. So you probably know already that if you if you're mo flying mode one, you know what this means. Um, okay, positive which is normal, which it means it goes up and down. You know, based on the pushing it over now. Dead zone that is fine. This is just sim simply the center, so it it doesn't have. A but none of this stuff is important. Let's go straight to calibration. You know. Calibration. Select the type of input device. You have a transmitter. You don't have a, a joypad. You have a transmitter. So that's what you select. And it says center all the sticks and trees and press next. So this, you see, you, you go and put all the sticks in the middle. You cannot do that with the flight modes or any other stuff. So, so just not, it's not necessary. So you click on next. And now move your left sticks to maximum forward left stick maximum four and notice that it is telling you here what to move so you go ahead and move it forward here and then you click on next now it says moving your move your left stick to maximum backwards see how it shows here so i move it backwards the one here see i move it backwards and i go next the next thing that you do is move your left stick to maximum right and press next okay so i'm going to move it maximum right press next and move your left stick to maximum left and press next left i'm sorry i didn't move it okay we're gonna have to start that again abort again start calibration transmitter uh, centers and this one this one this one and now this one okay there you go that's and now it's asking me to do this one move it this one, move it, this one, move it, and this one, move it. That's it. Finish. Now we have select, um, um, calibrated all the sticks, as you can see here. All right. So stick mode, positive pitch, everything. All right. So the next thing that we want to do is functions. Functions is very important, OK? Because it's the one that will select, for instance, here, model setup, you're going to have 
a flight condition here, hover, Jonas, Shelby, Valerio, Otero, Chelsea. So this will be mode 1, mode 2, mode 3, and mode 4. Or bank 1, bank 2, bank 3, and bank 4, whichever way you like to call it. Right. So when you have flight condition 1, 2, and 3, and 4, in this case I have a 3 but three position switch, so I'm going to only use this, uh, this 3 here. Okay. Um, what you do is you assign. So how do you assign it? Right. Well, here you have your uh, mode, flight mode, right? So, notice something. This, this is a very important aspect of this. Here. We're going to assign it, right? And we're going to say that it is a switch, right? And notice I'm going to go from the mode 2 to mode 1. So, it knows when it's in mode 1. You cannot start in mode 1 because you have to do the click that needs to recognize as mode 1 so you have to start a mode 2 right now we are in mode 1 and because of that I can go and assign a switch to mode 2 because once I move now the switch to mode 2 see that it recognized and assigned it so the third one is going to be flight condition 3 right now I'm mode 2 so I'm ready to switch to 3 so I go and assign a switch and I move it from 2 to 3 Look, there you go so these three are programmed uh, this one is not programmed, so I'm going to really uh, okay. restart here. Restart is the one that is the same as when you press the R here on the... So it's assigned... I'm assigning it to this one switch. So I'm going to put it where I don't reset. And I go restart, switch, and this is the position where I go and I do the restart. Okay. Landing gear doesn't apply here, so I'm going to delete that. Auto rotation. This is a switch for auto rotation, right? I put it in not auto, okay? Then I assign the auto by switching to auto, okay? That's the way you do it. Remember, you have to put it where it is not the condition so you can switch to it, okay? Self leveling is the rescue. Rescue is in this one here. Why do you want to have rescue in your, in your um, simulator? because press, press the rescue button button or switch that's it okay and that's it that's all now I have all of these uh, settings uh, 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 program on the helicopter okay so uh, apparently I gotta let me let me turn this off um, okay so uh, what I have right now is um, what I have right now is the program, the, I'm sorry, the control program into that. Like I said before, the modes are going to switch between these three right, right here, because I haven't programmed a fourth one. So when you switch here, you'll notice here in this situation that, see, go from hover, Jonas Help, and Valerio Botero. So that is because your setup here is hover, Jonas Help, Valerio Botero, and I assigned the switch to these flight conditions, okay? So that's what it does. So when you use mode one, it will go to this setting, to the hover setting. If you use mode two, it will go to this hover settings. Mode three will go to this setting. So it's like three different banks. So you can program three different flight modes and three different responses and everything else. So let's stick to the third, which is Valerio Botero. All right. Um, no, actually, no. Let me let me actually start on hover because it's the one that I probably no. I told you know I I don't want to screw up my my setup. So let's use this one that has. So I can manually select it like this. You know I don't have to have it on the on the switch. I can come back here and select it on press key number four also. I and I can access this one. Okay. So I'm gonna set this to the default. Default is always in white. Yellow means it's outside the default. So notice as all these numbers here are going to be the same, right? Okay, so let's uh, look at this for a second, right? And let me see, I never flew this one. Uh, I don't even know. It doesn't even have the... <laughs> Hold on for a second. What is this? Uh, ah, let me... So I'm going to have to do number three. Whoa, this thing is crazy. Okay. Okay, so um, now let's start by doing 
uh, the setup. One thing that you can do, by the way, I'm gonna export these things here. All of this stuff here. Oops. Um, I go to, by the way, use expert mode for all these things. So here is how you can save your um, model. Okay. So to do that, you can do this here, save it, and then you can save your model. So I'm doing that so I can uh, I can uh, come back and reapply those settings after I teach you how to do. Actually, let me see. Import export good. Base curve, All right? Good. So here we are. We are in the mm, in the uh, and this is important part for the setup of the helicopter. Okay. So what is this, right? Xbox export uh, sorry, Expo Elevator uh, Aileron, this is where you select obviously the Expo. Alright, I use zero, you know, some people can use ten or whatever. And dual ray aileron, this is the rotation rate. So let's put forty here and see what happens, right? Okay, so let's see. Rotation rate. Oh actually let's use this one because there's a, a very cool tool here which is this one so we don't have to be messing with this so this is the speed of the rotation rate right so if I'm coming back here okay and I do a higher number let's say this much here okay notice how fast it goes see that same with it okay so that's what what uh, this he does here you know this is Dual ray aileron elevator is the speed at which you are going to be rotating. Expo rotor again is expo. On this case, you do want to have a lot of expo on the rotor. Why? Well, the rotor has a particular thing that particular property, which is um, you have uh, mostly maneuvers that are going to require a little bit of control or full stick when you're doing full periodic maneuver. So giving the 50 means that in the middle you're going to have control. Let me show you here. So see in the middle you have a little, but the moment you floor it you have full control. So that allows you to have minute uh, amounts, of especially when you're doing like like uh, you're flying backwards or something like that. Uh, you want to slowly do corrections to do direction corrections and you don't want the, the the rotor to have too much uh, authority uh, on the stick because it is uh, detrimental to be able to fly, you know, backwards and things like that because it, it is a little bit too jerky. So I leave it on 50. You know? Now the rotation rate. This is simply, you know, like we had before. So we have this as a 50, right? And we come back and we do uh, what is that rotation? The rate rotor to rotation. That let's see 100. You'll see the difference. See, that's uh, the rotation rate uh, is selected here. Okay, maximum pitch is pretty much you know the angle, right? Uh, despite what my people think, uh, maximum pitch in this case, for instance, if you want to do smack, you don't want to have full full pitch here because it's difficult to control it and not hitting the ground. So for smack, you want to have something like that. For crazy stuff, you can go. 14 degrees if you want or something like that but normally you know um, you're going to be around the 12.5 or something like that that's the maximum pitch now response pitch is interesting this is going to be notice uh, this requires me to fly it so let me do that uh, I press the Z as in zebra you turn off that tool okay and I reset it and notice uh, the response on the on the On the uh, stick on the on the uh, pitch, okay. Now on the pitch, uh, where's that? Here, on the pitch, break dynamic. I'm sorry, response pitch. Um, where's that? It? Okay, response pitch is the. Hold on for a second. I have a problem here. Okay, the response pitch here is a. Um, the response pitch around the center. This one here. Now for the pitch break dynamics, that's the one that I was trying to, to, to show you, right? You have this one, which is the one that you saw. Let me exaggerate this and you can see the difference, right? 
So notice how this one has more uh, more of a um, damper effect. See, I go like that and see that. Hold on, let me go uh, and do the change here. Uh, where's that uh, pitch breakdown? It's okay. And I'm gonna go now to zero, and you will see the difference. So you can see the the response on the pitch, and um, where's that uh, pitch breakdown? Uh, okay, pitch breakdown. Um, and so what this uh, adjusts here, right, is how fast it reacts to uh, pitch changes. Okay. So I had, so in other words, how fast, how heavy you want the the uh, the response to be. So if you want a, a sharp response, you go this way, and if you want a dampen response, you go the, the other way. And I think I, I mentioned that backwards, but anyway. So now you know, uh, response pitch is that, okay, and uh, this is around center, okay, and this one is uh, across the whole the whole uh, pitch. Um, response okay the main rotor is the head speed is this one 2400 uh, that's, that's uh, the speed at which I fly my my um, cracking and normally you're gonna be somewhere around you know 2000 or something like that so you can hear now the it's a uh, softer you know because it's, it's doing uh, less uh, rpms so the response feels uh, softer like that okay now uh, let's see the um, uh, where's that at? flight duration okay flight duration where do you want that oh i'm sorry main rotor weight leave it as it is and uh, flight duration 30 means you don't want to have that thing stop every 3.2 minutes you want that thing to last half an hour so you don't you don't get interrupted you know you don't get your session interrupted so move this all the way to 30. by the way before i continue there's something that i needed to show you in the physics this year normally the gravity is 9.81 okay but a lot of us that fly next have found that that's a little bit unrealistic so it is more likely to behave as a real helicopter when you move this to 12. so this is an important thing remember settings physics and go to the gravity and set it to that okay collision velocity i put it all the way because i don't want this thing to crash collision collision rotor you know full landing gear so in other words i want an unbreakable helicopter because i don't want to have i want to practice you know i don't want to 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 be interrupting my practice if i hit the ground i sim simply just go up and continue because i don't want to have any any delays on my training okay so again, this this is an important uh, so settings, physics. Come back here and, and do the things so that you can crash as much as you want. It's not going to interrupt your settings. You know, I'm sorry, your your training. And this one here um, is the uh, 12 uh, the 12 uh, uh, the G's, the one G making it into 12 meters per second per second. And uh, uh, okay, so going back to this, and that was an important thing. GPS mode off. We don't we're not using that. Camera field of view. Uh, 110 facial lens 50 this is fine engine power everything is fine there uh, oh I'm sorry uh, engine power changes the power of the engine pretty much you know so you can have um, uh, a, a larger engine or something like that you know you, you you choose the engine based on the uh, data sheet of the one that you are supposed to be flying like and simply put put it here you know consumption at zero pitch this is fine, you know. This, these settings are not important for you. This is how much you consume when it's not uh, when it's uh, at zero pitch, you know. So it's not flying; it's just uh, standing on the ground. Consumer, consume consumption at maximum pitch is going to be 5.15 kilowatts, which is very close to the maximum, right? Because that's uh, going to be when it's full pitch, you know. Uh, cons consumption with my cycle cyclic that means when you are doing this movement. Okay, when you're doing the full cyclic movement, okay, 
so that would be how many 1.77 cooldown is uh, I think this is um, the smaller the value the faster the engine cools down you can always uh, read here at the bottom cooldown see the smaller the value there's a description right there okay elevator multiplicator defines the maximum travel of elevator in addition to the dual rate setting that um, is um, uh, a factor to multiply this here dual rate okay if you want to have aileron and elevators different you can do that here okay rotor multiplicator the same thing you can add or take from here all right so this is fine and uh, just leave them like that okay now um uh where's that input uh, expert settings right yeah okay so where were we here okay a resistance has to do with the resistance to the travel of the helicopter in other words uh, how much the air opposes the 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 helicopter from from traveling not important just leave it like that visual v well, sorry, virtual brake is um the brake effect that the helicopter um that they uh, i'm sorry that the main rotor has and the specific axis that's why you have sideways pitch and lengthwise lengthwise inertia the inertia is the tendency of the helicopter to stay moving or stay in a resting position if you make this too high then the t it takes a lot of time for the heli to gain speed and a lot of time for it to, sw to small it's like a heavy train you know it becomes so that's uh, something you want to leave it like that power pitch uh, power pitch is um, the amount of of um, of uh, power that the that the uh, helicopter has when you have this position or this position. Okay, maximum. Leave it like that too. Swirling. This is an important, very important setting. This is a very important setting for for learning, and this is why. Swirling. What it will do is it will insert instabilities on your training in other words let's say you want to do um, uh, 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 hover training right i'm gonna put it on a, on a hover right let's say you have a, a little hover trainer this one is set up for 3d so it's gonna be okay so you have the, the training here you see me move it around but you see it's not really doing much now let me go and do this uh, twir uh, twirling, twirling. I'm sorry. And I'm gonna put it all the way one. Okay. This is what will happen. Notice. Okay. Now I'm here. See how the hell is doing stuff that I don't want. So it's teach. It's letting me learn. See how it's moving that way, without me doing anything. I didn't touch it and it starts doing stuff. This is good for you to to, to practice, to practice um, hovering maneuvers, right? See how it's going all the way by itself, and going all the way this way. So I'm gonna put it on the spot, on the, on the spot, and then release. I'm gonna release. See how it's going this way now, like in reality, you know, in reality it, it does that. So swirling is a very useful tool when you're doing training for hover. Okay, you put it all the way here. And the standard is 0.3, which is fine. Okay, and uh, so this you want to have, you want to, don't forget about this one because this will help you on the training uh, exercises, right? Lift factor. Lift factor is um, the amount, you know, when you get hit by the side, by the air, how much the heli raises. No important, not important. Cyclic factor, same thing, but for the cyclic. Um, torque main rotor. All of this stuff here is so you know all of this stuff is is really not important to if you want to know what it is just go come here and, and read that now there's one here that is important auto rotation auto rotation and let me put this into zero zero point zero one four okay this one in zero point zero one eight okay and 0 0.170 okay this one here is an important uh, setting right 
a lot of people know that Next sucks at autoing. That's just the way it is. I have told Klaus that. But, you know, he doesn't want to change it. So we can change it for him. And the nice thing is that he leaves it here for you to mess with it if you want. Now, when you have an authorization, and that is something that you might want to learn about, is auto rotation is the transfer of the potential energy of the height of the heli into kinetic energy into the into the uh, the the blades. In other words, the height becomes speed on the blades. So that transfer of energy from the height into the speed of the blades is determined by several factors. And here's where you can control those things, right? So consumption, elevator later on this this here elevator later on, this here is what um uh an elevator will consume more, like you see here, 27, than an, than an aileron. And everybody that does a, an auto knows that if you flip, you, you're going to lose a lot of energy. And if you roll, you lose a lot less energy. So this ratio here will adjust that, okay? Actually, I don't handle, I don't mess with this because it's about right. Consumption of mechanics, right? It's a certain amount that the mechanics use as a friction and things like that. So how much energy you lose from the mechanics? I don't change that either. Inertia of the main rotor. This is an important one. Right? Inertia is, like I said before, the tendency of this thing to be able to hold um, energy. So you want to have here a large number. So I always set that to about 10. Okay, And that will be uh, higher in inertia than that. So you, you can hold more, more energy. Now keep head speed this is too low okay uh, over here I go 0 0.03 I think 0 0.03 okay flare it in flare li li look at it says using airflow and the appropriate angle uh, of the main rotor blades to he to head speed can be increased multiplicated hours if you set up your correct angle it should increase the speed but it doesn't do it enough on the so what I do here is I go 0 0.00 and then 38 that's what I put here sorry 38 38 that's the amount and flare horizontally is um, the same thing you know in horizontal flight the head speed can be also be increased multiplicator also the same thing like here I go 0 0.240 that's what I do here, okay? This one here actually is not necessary. Let's just leave it like that, 1.8.7. So we can use the, the, the main rotor inertia based on the definition of blades. And let's play with these three to do that, okay? Now, this here allows you to have autos that are similar to reality. Uh, these numbers you can change, you know. It's, as I explained the, the, the meaning of that, then you can then play with the things, you know and set it exactly as your helicopter behaves and that is a nice thing other other simulators don't let you touch it uh, so the ones that they decide cannot be changed which is a shame you know because maybe they have it right yeah that's fine but you know what it is a hobby and i want to do whatever the hell i want with my toys and this is one of my toys and i want to be able to adjust it so that's why I said. so over here like i said before that's where you have uh, I'm gonna do a quick recap so you know this here is gonna be the expo you know everybody knows what expo is elevator and later dual rate of that's a speed of the rotation okay on elevator and later so flipping and rolling speed expo rotor again it's usually a good idea to have a high number because it allows you to have fine control on on, on flying and in full speed on pirouetting uh, maneuvers okay dual rate rotor is the speed of the rotor um, the speed, uh, meaning the number of, of uh, rotations of a tail, the number of periods per second. Okay, so it goes here as a percentage, but you know, simply you go up or low or whatever, and it does give you that. Maximum pitch is a, a, a degree response pitch, like I said before. Let's read the, the definition here. The pitch response around the neutral point is adjustable. Use higher values for more pitch direct response. See, that's the definition. So pitch uh, break, same thing. Go down here and read the higher the dynamics the sharper reacts pitch while load changes don't go too crazy on these things because helicopters really don't don't 
uh, don't stop as hard as you can put it on a, on a simulator. And the problem with that is that once you get used to that, you expect that that uh, hard stop, and um, and then you crash because you thought it you were going to to come to a stop quickly when you were going into the ground, trying to do smack. And guess what? The thing continued more than you thought, and s and you slammed the ground. So don't overdo these these things. You know, leave with the fact that they don't they don't s s uh, move as fast as you wish we 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 would like. That if you're not running some crazy, you know, RPMs like I do on my mouse and stuff like that. So, anyway, camera field of view, fish eye lens, all right, you know that, engine power. Okay, so all of this stuff here is the way you set up your heli for your, for your, um, uh, next. And, uh, let me see if there's anything else here. Let's see, in settings. Uh, time scale, I already told you that. Increase that to 12, make the, so, so you don't, you know, you can slash uh, Slam that, slam the thing on the ground all the time and keep on flying. If you don't like it, we just put it on the. This, these are the default values, you know. And um, so let me see what else. Physics. Online is where you go online, and you know if you, when you go online, these are the settings for that. Sounds. These are the sounds for the ambient noise. Notice that I have volume at one, because I'm taping. Uh, I'm recording this. Uh, and I don't want the helicopter noise to be too high. And I actually keep it, I think it's at three or four, very little, because it, it annoys me. Uh, main rotor volume also, like that. Volume of the tail rotor, I put it on zero, because the original sound of the of the, of the rotor on, on next is annoying as hell, and I just turn it off, because I hate that, that wow, 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 wow noise that the thing does. Maximum distance, this is something that you want to have uh, four, and notice that the definition. Uh, it says, uh, where's that maximum distance? Uh, it doesn't have the definition here. But anyway, so this here allows you to take the helicopter far um, with, uh, so, so you can see uh, so where the helicopter still is making the correct noises, you know, at 400. Uh, roll off mode, um, linear, yeah, that's. The way I like it. I don't like it low everything because this would actually be the real life. But because I am in a in a simulator, I want to hear what's going on even when it's far. So switch it to linear, so you can hear the the blade and the the, the barking of the blade and things like that even though it's far. Uh, flare tone. Uh, this one is uh, very useful for our rotation training, and that is the the that you hear when when you have a. Um, on that rotation, okay. Crash sound. This is if you want to hear the crash when it sounds. Time and direction. Right now, I have it on off. You know, you can do that to use a timer. Uh, music. If you want to use music and all that stuff, that's fine. So sounds. Graphics. Okay, graphics. This is an important thing. Okay. Graphics is uh, you want to have. Well, it depends on your 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 card, but um, here let, let's 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 do. Let's go slowly and and see. The the show frame rate here will show how many frames per second you get here. See? This is doing 90, 89 frame, frames per second, okay? Um, that's what's frame rate. <coughs> FPF warning, uh, I forgot what it was what this was. It's some frame per second one. Yeah, yeah, it, it's the one that tells you that your your uh, video card is not is missing the frames, you know. Vertical sync is something that use depending on your on your um, video card, so that you have to find that from your video card manual. Uh, target frame rate. Right now I have it in, in you know 90. I put if I do this, for instance, I can go and sorry, let me uh, show frame rate here. Okay, so see I can do 728 because this is a very very powerful. Um, screen I'm um, sorry a video card <coughs> but normally you know you can do with 90 and stuff like that it should be enough okay I have it here at 90 because that's the one that I use when I'm doing um, virtual reality don't forget about something I don't really use this much because I don't use 2d simming I get confused with 2d simming, 2D simming. I have switched to VR simming completely 
because it actually helps a lot more in in the perception and the the ability of you to learn uh, because the helicopter feels real and you even jump backwards if it go, goes towards you because you know you you have the feeling that you are in the field so your your depth of, uh, uh, your perception perception of depth because you have a stereoscopic vision helps you a lot in getting the helicopter to fly so if you can afford it get yourself one set of virtual reality goggles and uh, and skin that's why I have such a powerful video it's one of those Nvidia 3000 or something I forgot RTX something <coughs> anyway shadows this is shadow soft and high well this is obviously you know show cascades or not other stuff is important no, anti-aliasing this here is depending on your uh, screen I'm sorry your video card this can overload the video card so use this uh, carefully you know if you wanna just start and put it disabled you know it will work better if you don't have a very powerful uh, video card same about all these things you know disable here until I in post effects texture quality full resolution you could go to a lower resolution to lower the load on your on your video card uh, co uh, covering objects I don't care about this you know the watermark this is simply the um, next uh, watermark and, and uh, who knows double a uh, double size D4E, Freeware, AT, huh, interesting. So I have it enough. Light intensity 100%, uh, I'm being light, light, light. Well, this is obviously, you know what it says. I'm being light, daylight. You can change that. Okay, transparency rotor disk. Oh, this is important. You have, you want to put it, let's see, around here. Let me see. Let's see how it does show and here it shows see that white uh, thing so you don't want to have you want to see the 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 rotor disc okay x3d scenery settings well all that stuff is not important to me because this is for x3d sceneries and i don't use x3d sceneries so uh graphics uh camera this is an incredibly important thing okay incredibly important thing damping this is super important okay the field of view in a camera depends on the mouse wheel here let me show you this and this, this is the zoom right on 2d this doesn't work on 3d because in 3d you cannot zoom your eyes um, so maximum distance here is um, missing for a second this is graphics uh, camera Oh, so you can see. I'm sorry. So, the camera can uh, can reach 500 uh, meters. Now, f zoom mode is logarithmic, linear, smaller, logarithmic. So I like the logarithmic because it's more real. Okay. Um, now, uh, this here allows you to go around and see your scenery, as you can see, right, with the mouse. So you can check your scenery and see if you like it. Okay. So you can turn it off here and now this is the one that I wanted to get to okay um, let me put it on zero okay so you'll see what I mean all right let's try let's try let's try with zero okay um, notice how the helicopter stays always on the on the middle of the of the of the um, what do you call this uh, of the scene right Okay, so I'm doing, I'm doing, I'm pumping and, uh, your pitch, and you can see that the reason how you know that is because you see the the scenery pumping. Okay, so let's do this, which is more real. Okay, let, let me go to eight and see what happens. Right, in a real life, when you take off and you start doing pumping, look at this one. This, see that? So this is more like real life. See. If you're doing this, you can see the the the, the helicopter uh, reacting, so it's it's more realistic to be able to see that. As you can see that, see. So it allows you to see the um, the movement of the heli as 
it moves across this. See how the screen, top of the screen, bottom left, right, and things like that. See. So you come here, especially when you come closer. Let's say you're doing. Um, Here close, you can feel the. Um, see how they move so away, so you can get a better perception of what the helicopter is doing with the pumping of the tick tocking. See the tick tock. You can see the tick tock be described on the on the screen, and this is very cool. So eight might be too much, you know. So you can go out to another to another um, number that uh, will will give you the um, okay, let me go reset uh, will give you the uh, a better I think I normally use it I think a five that's about right that's where I do that when I am in 2D the thing is I never into these so I don't have all these things going um, okay so that's about it and um, training uh, training is uh, delay after crash I put it at a minimum, you know, I put it at 0.5 because it's just, so it recovers quickly. If it doesn't recover, I switch it on my reset. Start direction, it allows you to set where the helicopter starts. So let's say we make it zero, see that? It changes. Over here, 180 is the opposite, um, 270, uh, sorry, minus 90, I guess. Yeah, my nose that is the same as zero. Anyway, so so in other words, you can set that uh, random, uh, or you can set random starting direction, and then it, it will, you know, start whichever way the thing likes to. Starting height zero, of course. You know, you can actually make it go, you know, start in a high place. That that works well for other kind of models. A helicopter that doesn't make much sense. Made makes mu much sense. Starting high launching pad, you can turn it on. Okay, that's the helicopter part there. Okay, drone for experts. I don't know. I don't care. Uh, recorder. You can record uh, flights with a V. Okay, boxes and pylon. This is for. Uh, let me show you here. There's the other one. No, doesn't boxes or pylon. Uh, marking. Um, I forgot what the marking is. A sky grid. Is that grid that you see here? That helps you when you're training for FAI stuff. Birds, if you want to see birds around, you you start flying it, they show up. The next logo is their big ass logo. You can use and and do stupid stuff like like uh, landing sideways into the thing with uh, pr putting pressure on the on the walls of the logo. Uh, time scale is a a way to slow down the physics. Okay, so if you go here, for instance, all right, let's say here. And uh, we look at the, see how the helicopter is slow down. So let's say you want to do. Okay. So we can do. Oh my God, it's going to kill me. <laughs> anyway, so that's what it is. Okay. So that's what uh, time scale is. You want to make it again into 100%. 100. Okay. So going back to that uh, time scale. Uh, traffic cones are good for for um, traffic cones for um, FAI practice. Let me make this smaller so we can do see more stuff. You know. So you see the the traffic and these are the the the. Um, Lines, uh, where's that at here? Where was I? So, no. where's the traffic? Uh, pause time scale. Where's that at? Traffic comes here on uh, F3C. These are the ones for F3C. Which, um, let me see, uh, they actually show. Let me close it for a second so you can see that. There they are. Those are the ones that are used for 3C. Um, the ones I said before was, was not correct. 
uh, flight box um, let's see well you know what this is something you can actually look at and see now that you know what this uh, stuff does you simply go and click on everything self leveling self leveling is the uh, is the, the setting for bailing you know but for rescue so you have normal plus pitch normal 3d 3d plus pitch uh, if you want a, a, a normal rescue just use this one if you want to you know you can experiment with the other one experiment with the other ones and figure out what it is it's pretty simple okay and it says here at the bottom normal normal pitch see at the bottom it says it's explanation of what each one is rescue threshold this is uh, to uh, do um, where do you want the, the stick uh, to be at in this case is not important because we have a switch correction rate is how fast you want it and how much pace you want it to do it to, to recover from that hover trainer hover trainer is a trainer um, system that he has uh, but I'm, I haven't used it, you know. Limiter area, I have no idea what this is. Must be kept inside the flight. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember what this is. So it's so so you can store, st uh, stay within an area. A Peter trainer um, shortcut is Z. Okay. So if you turn it on, it's this one that we talked about before. So you can cl come close and open. This is one of the most useful tools for. For training the Piro tool, the Piro trainer, um, <coughs> and uh, I asked Jonas from Accuracy, and he told me that they would have it in probably a week or so. I don't know if that's already there or not, so we'll see. Uh, rotor control, well, anyway, smoke generator. If you want to do smoke, see how it shows. So you can do, you know, pla practice and do maneuvers and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. Uh, let me see what else is there. Um, the tra training, okay. Scenery, well, you know the scenery and everything else. Model setup already went through that. Here's where you select your your uh, um, your uh, uh, models. Now, in this section here, when you have the um, the correct one. You will have this model, which is the one that I did for for the training of the here in the model setup. I can make it transparent like that, you know, super transparent. So anyway, so that is something that uh, I forgot the shadows. Let me go to settings, graphics. Let's see graphics uh, for shadows, clear, shadows soft, shadow high, shadow cascades. Uh -huh, that's Beautiful, fantastic. No shadows. Show sure, stuff. Uh, I thought that is what I had. By the way, so this model here, like I said before, is one that allows you to train um, to train. Um, so you learn how to how to fly without looking at at uh, like uh, you know at, at the at the nose or at the skates or at the whatever you know so it allows you to simply be aware of the helicopter and fly it as needed and that will even though it might sound like it's difficult once you learn how to fly instinctively you will notice that that's the way you want to fly anyway so so oops i killed myself <laughs> so uh that is um and you can do you know your fleets so, you know you name it you can do anything you want with it so and uh, and you become aware of the presence of the tail as an indicator but you don't, you don't actually look at the tail so that's what this is for okay anyway so going back here uh, this is called the Augie training disc uh, okay so uh, where's that uh, well that is also on the heli X uh, uh, thing so let me switch uh, models to prototype uh, prototype uh, SAB SAB here because that's the one that I was flying. Okay, and that's the way. Uh, let's see if there's anything else. You know, we have models, setup, uh, scenery training, online, and settings. 
Okay, screen resolution. Uh, yeah, no essential frame rate. Yeah, yeah, we already went through that. Input device, license, physics, online, graphics, camera, miscellaneous. Miscellaneous simply uh, a list of how you can, like, remember when I said I press Z for the Peter Trainer? Here's the Z for that. So you can do, like, uh, also unmuted music and um, playlist and blah blah. So you read here, these are keystrokes. Like a reset, I think was R. Get a new helicopter at spawn point. That's a reset, right? Which I have it assigned to a switch because I don't want to have to move my hand to the um, to the keyboard and do that. So it is done here already. So that's how it, you know. So this is how you set up your your um, helicopter. And don't forget model setup. That is where you want to do all the setup. So you simply go select how fast you want and close it, test it. By the way, I go right click when I bring that thing. It's right click, uh, and I come back and and do a rotor. You know, and come back and forth until you make it feel the same as your heli. And it is something that you choose. There is no set things for this. Whichever way you like it, you can set it up. So now you know how to set it up. You don't have to depend on anybody. You say, oh, it's too fast. Well, just come here. Too fast where on the aileron elevator? You go and slower. Oh, it's too low, too slow. So you go faster, and that's how you move the cyclics. You know, uh, same with the rotor. You know, dual rate rotor. If it's going too fast, come here. If you're going too too slow, go higher. So about you know as much as you need. So now that you understand this, you can watch this a few times as you train your, uh, as you select your helicopter. I'm saying um, as you sorry set up your helicopter. And let me turn this off for a second and that way you will be able to set it the way you want it and that is the first step of the uh, August instinctive flying technique is having your helicopter fly the way you like it first so that when you train you train feeling the way you want it to feel uh, and the interesting point is that the training itself will in a way force you to adjust yourself to a better setup because you will figure out that uh, maybe you have too much speed or you have too little speed and things like that as you train the exercises and, uh, and then you start making adjustments and at the end of the training you will have the setup that you like so that you can perform the maneuvers that. so like I said it's up to you how you start and then you will adjust according but now you know how, how to adjust it you know what to do if you're doing a, a, a training, you know, or training in one of the uh, of the episodes, and you feel that you need more speed here. Some of simply come back here, go to model setup, and set it the way you want it. Adjust it so and continue training. Okay, so that's it. That's about it. And this is the first uh, episode of the um, August um, flying. I'm sorry, August uh, instinctive flying techniques. I should have chosen a. a an Eastern <laughs> name for that shouldn't call it instinctive. Uh, it's probably more like perception, the perception school. Is, but anyway, that's the way it is perception or instinctive flying technique. Uh, and uh, hope you guys enjoy it and have a good time. Thank you.